So good afternoon, everybody. While Marie is putting up my slides, I'd like to thank Marie and David for the invitation to uh, address you uh, this afternoon on lifelong learning for all, a prisoner's right to education. So next slide. My presentation today, as Marie uh, introduced me, is about a review of education in prison conducted uh, for the UNESCO Institute of Lifelong Learning, which will be published later this year. And what I want to do is begin with a brief analysis of the principles on which education in prison is based, then look at how these impact on domestic policies, and then consider how these policies are translated into practice. Finally, drawing on the research from my literature review, I will offer some recommendations on enhancing the provision of education in prison. Next slide. So while there are many international and transnational agreements and declarations, covenants uh, and treaties which impact on education in prison, I've only time today to mention the universal uh, principles set out in the Mandela rules passed by the UN General Assembly in 2015. These set out clearly that all prisoners have a right to education and essentially that Education is more than just classroom subjects, but encompasses cultural engagement and library access. Next slide, please. And the rules also emphasize that prisoners remain part of the community while incarcerated. And I'm gonna come back to this because I think it's an essential element when we're looking at the right to education and the right to lifelong learning for all. And I take it that there's one overarching principle Education is a right for all prisoners. It's not a privilege that can be withdrawn by prison administrations or diluted due to political demands for more punitive policies in the treatment of prisoners. Education is a right. And for those of us who have been around prisons and studied prisons for a long time, we're aware of the acute difference between a right and a privilege. So that's the overarching principle. Education is a right and not a privilege. Next slide, please. However, in my analysis, I found that principles set out at international level are rarely realized in domestic policies. Essentially, this can be due to penal policy taking precedence over education and provision. Sometimes it can be due to an erosion of resources available for schools and prisons. This is particularly acute, I think it must be noted, in times of austerity or crisis. Sometimes it's due to the redefining of education, moving from a holistic approach that meets the demand of learners to narrower agendas that either respond to the demand of employers or become part of cognitive skills, cognitive skills programs so prevalent in prisons today. While job skills and cognitive programs are important in their own right, they should not triumph over the provision of a holistic student-centered curriculum. The lack of access for some prisoners due to amongst other issues, segregation within the prison regime or language barriers can lead to uh, further exclusion and deeper exclusion of prisoners even within the institution itself. Next slide, please. So moving from policy to practice, the overriding challenge is how to engage in pedagogy, what Paolo Freire termed the practice of freedom in coercive environments. Educators and learners endeavor to resist the penal ethos by creating a space for pedagogy in prison schools. The principles that inform the provision of education outside in lifelong learning and adult education also inform the provision of education inside. These are ideas around cooperation, flexibility, ambiguity, equality, and indeed empowerment with the goal of personal, political and social growth. These principles allow for individual learning plans, alternative methods of defining success, embracing a range of subjects through an informal curriculum. Essentially what it's about is acknowledging prisoners agency and recognizing that they are participants in the co-production of knowledge. Essentially what it's based on is an underlying belief that education is about inclusion, 
and preparing students to participate as active citizens in and outside the prison. Next slide, please. So finally, and these recommendations from my uh, review of the literature are at the moment only tentative. And as I'm going through it, I'm uh, developing them. But what I found so far is this. In terms of recommendations, although it's essential that penal policymakers and prison management facilitate and support prison schools, policies on education in prison should be devised by national ministries of education and or local education authorities. Adequate funding needs to be allocated to deliver a fully resourced school in each prison. Extra resources are essential to provide for education to prisoners with particular educational needs, including those with literacy and numeracy difficulty. And I think this is especially important in terms of a social justice context, because there are a disproportionate number of prisoners who have had a negative experience of education in their early years, first time round. There should indeed be a holistic curriculum to meet the social, cultural and physical needs of students. And considering the overrepresentation of minority populations, it is essential that the curriculum is sensitive to the student group. It must therefore recognize and embrace the history, culture and identity of minority and marginalized uh, populations. The establishment of digital connectivity in order to enable digital literacy is essential for modern pedagogical practice. This has been acutely revealed to all of us during the COVID pandemic, when, with educators and learners having little or indeed no face-to-face -face access for long periods of time. Considering the number of people in prison who do not speak the language of the country in which they are located, this necessitates the provision of language classes and greater uh, ESOL resources. Creative and cultural activities should be facilitated throughout uh, each prison, going back to the idea from the Mandela rules that education is wider than just what goes in on the classroom. And central to education activities is an adequately supplied library staffed by accredited library personnel which are an essential resource within the wider educational environment. So in conclusion, there are, numbers, there are a number of reasons for the provision of education in prison. On an individual level, education is not just about the accumulation of skills or the acquisition of knowledge. It embraces a range of competencies that can enable personal fulfillment. Education enhances the lives of us all, opening up a world of reading, culture, history, identity, and understanding. It helps each and every one of us make meaning of the world we live in. Lifelong learning is about the pursuit of knowledge. It's about personal fulfillment. It's about consciousness raising. It's about engaging, enable, enabling, and empowering. Ultimately, adult education, for which I strongly argue prison education is an integral part of, is about enriching people's lives, building communities and sustainable societies. Despite the challenges and obstacles of achieving these in penal environments, we should remain true to these ambitious objectives. We do so in the hope of empowering learners to make a positive contribution to the civic life of our communities, thus creating a better society for all. Thank you.